the rendering plugin that you use in Rhino uh, really dictates everything to do with setting up the rendering from the materials to the environments to the settings that you're going to use for lighting and, and features. In this tutorial, I'm using Rhino Renderer, which is the default rendering plugin that Rhino ships with, the Windows version of Rhino. And um, the only additional tool that I'll be using is a free plugin called Neon, which renders in the viewport. Um, the material panel, the environment panel, uh, the settings and lighting, all of that is the default Rhino tools. Neon just happens to access it all. Um, for the ray tracing for the actual rendering. So I'm going to switch to wireframe mode here just to set up the rendering. And what I like to do is select the product and I'll rotate it uh, like it was sitting on um, uh, a backdrop in a photo studio. So I'll rotate it by 90 degrees. And then let's drag this up in the Z axis. Let's check out how that looks here. That red line is indicating the top construction plane. So something like that should be good. And then in the top view or perspective view, I'll make a plane and I'll choose deformable. This will give it more control points and from center and the center point will be zero. I'm going to hold down shift while I drag this out and that'll keep the plane square. And then I'll select the plane and turn on the control points. Select these back three rows and rotate them and drag them up. Drag this one out. So this creates like that paper backdrop. And then I'll turn off the control points. Select that, all the objects, and zoom selection all viewports, and go back to my four view. Now what I like to do is drag the perspective view off up towards the command line, and this creates a floating viewport. Uh, the floating viewport can then be changed in terms of its width and height, and this will be the pixel dimensions of my, uh, my image that I render with neon. So I'm going to say 400 pixels wide, uh, by 800 uh, in height. And then I'll get a view that I like. Something like that should be good. And with the Neon plugin installed, you'll have a ray traced with Neon display mode. So I just switch to that display mode in the perspective um, floating viewport that I've got. And as Neon gets started, you see the model as it appeared in um, in rendered mode. And uh, as it's cranking away, it just sort of counts the samples here. So at the moment, we see the addition of these uh, this hard shadow, but not much else besides for that at the moment. So what we'll do is go over into our panels here, right-click and choose Sun. So we display the Sun panel and then just turn on the skylight. Now earlier on I set up that environment so that we could see reflections in the material and if I go over to the environment tab you can still see this is the Rhino interior uh, environment that ships with Rhino and it has a high dynamic range image in it. Um, that image if you click here is a photo of this uh, this room and there's this field here called HDR multiplier this is kind of like the dimmer switch on how bright the lights are so the image is being used by the skylight and that image can get brighter so let's make it 2.2 and you'll see this update and become brighter now one thing that happens when you um, when you have a rendering in any rendering plugin is that objects that are completely white will end up um, getting blown out. They'll get really bright. So there's really no absolute white or absolute black in the real world. So let's select this ground plane and give it a slightly gray color. So rather than total white, we'll give it this gray. 
and you can see how that affects um, the contrast overall to the image. Okay, now the materials are all listed in the material panel. So you can either select an object to figure out uh, which one it is. Like for instance, this is the, um, the blister pack. Um, or you can, in object properties, edit it directly as we had been. Um, now this blister pack looks pretty uh, kind of gray, not see-through enough. So let's make that transparency 100% in the material. Now the index of refraction is still 1.46, that value for plastic, and so now it's looking a lot better. Um, now the material for the handle uh, was this one, yes. And we can just double check. If I make that um, maybe like 79% transparent, you can see what's happening here. Now that index of refraction is 1.46. So it looks more realistic than it did in the viewport itself in the, the rendered display mode because that was just on the graphics card. Now we're actually ray tracing so the light is bending as it passes through this based on this value. Let me make this color a little bit more vivid. Yeah, I like that. Okay, finally I think this uh, world axis right here, if this is the active view, this world axis um, should be hidden and you can do that with the command uh, grid. And then choose show world axis, it's a yes no toggle, and then enter. And I'll just let this calculate for a minute. Now you could um, make additional lights if you wanted to. Um, and maybe one last tweak that we'll do here is in the environment, the output adjustment for that high dynamic range image, there's a saturation. Maybe I'll change it to 0.3. So there isn't quite as much of that um, that incandescent color, that sort of warm color. I think that looks a little bit better. Now if you did want to make more lights, you can use this uh, light fly out here um, or in the render tools. There's a whole bunch of lights here. I like uh, rectangular lights for soft shadows. But the skylight with a high dynamic range image in the environment will give you soft shadows and realistic reflections all at the same time. Um, so it's a, it's a really nice way to get started with rendering. Now finally in the display panel or display toolbar here there's this icon and you've got your two options there view capture to file and view capture to clipboard. So whenever the image is at uh, a resolution it's um, sharp enough for you then just click view capture to file when that's the active view and you can save it out as a variety of different image formats. Um, I'll save it as a PNG called toothbrush. And that's how to model and render a product and apply packaging and lighting in Rhino 5. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series. Thanks a lot for watching.